Okay, we're live on Facebook. Welcome everybody. Uh, we are, we welcome all of our sewists, our makers, our quilting enthusiasts, uh, all types of uh, creators. We welcome you this week to our Facebook Live. It is our Inspired By series for Free Spirit Fabrics. I'm Sharon Thornton and we welcome you this week as we welcome you every week. We love that you all tune in to see us. I'd like to ask you all to let us know where you're tuning in from. We'd love to know that. Um, if you have any questions about Free Spirit Fabrics, please go to freespiritfabrics.com and look us up. You can see all kinds of information about the different fabric lines that we carry. So we would love for you to come in and check, you know, check us out and to also go in and look at our projects and our programs and all of the different events that we have that we're creating for our um, sewing friends out there in the world. So thank you for joining us. Um, we are very excited this week. We have Kay Fassett and Brandon Mabley are joining us. They're going to talk with us about their February 2021 fabrics that are shipping to quilt stores now. So we're very excited to have them. We kicked off the new year this year with Kafe and Brandon on February 2nd, and we're very excited to have them back again. So we thank, we thank them for uh, joining us again. I would like to hold on one second here. I'm not sure I'm getting messages. Um, hold on. Well, I'm going to keep going until I get any more messages. So I would like to um, tell you about the quilts that are behind me. There, this quilt over here on the right is done out of the fabrics that are delivering. And this will be, uh, this is called Directions. This, that's the name of this quilt. It is made and designed by Tammy Silvers of Tamburini's. I don't know if you could see the quilt a little bit better if I turn my screen. And then the other one over here is called Logging Trail. And she made and designed that one also. And it's out of the fabrics that are being delivered now that Kate and Brandon are going to talk a bit more about. So I'd like to let you know that information. So go to tamarinis.com if you're interested in those patterns. And my top is Zappy Dots. So the Enchanted pattern and it's Zappy Dots. So if you are interested in any of Kate and Brandon's and Phillips uh, designs, you can go to Zappy Dots and pick all types of different- uh, um, Stand up. Oh, you want me to stand up? Woo! Woo, there it is. <laughs> so it's a great top. I, they're very comfortable, lots of different uh, patterns. So go on out there and take a look. Um, so I would like to say that uh, Lindsay Dryden and Nancy Jewell will be on and they'll be answering questions and putting up links of anything that we're talking about today. If you have any questions, um, please you know, send them through. We will do our best to answer some questions as we go through. And then I would like to let you know that I am tuning in from sunny North Carolina. We have had a month full of rain Brandon and Kaif, I don't know what you guys have over there in London, if it's if it's raining or you've seen any sun this month or not, but I'm very happy that we finally have some sunshine here. And uh, so I know it's like five o'clock where you guys are at and it's around it, noontime where we're at here in Eastern Standard Time. Can we see it? Can they hear us? They can hear you, yes. Yeah, okay. So it's, I'm gonna turn, Brandon, I'm gonna turn the screen over to you and Kaif. Okay. There you go. You guys are on. So I would like to welcome you. Brandon is on screen now. I know Kate will be joining in shortly. So thank you for joining us. We are so thrilled to have you. And uh, we have a lot of viewers that are watching right now. And so we're very excited to have everybody with us. Um, all of our viewers as well as you guys. So I'm going to turn it over to you right now. They can see you and they can hear me. Okay, welcome, welcome. Um, I uh, know I've got people listening in from Holland, uh, from Italy. Um, I last webinar that we gave, there were over 20,000 people that tuned in. So I welcome and embrace you all. Thank you very much for being a big part of our world. It's incredibly exciting for Keith and I because we sit here in our humble home and put together arrangements of color in all these mirage uh, pattern and 
color mediums that we do and then throw them out into the world and you guys just embrace it in your own way. And it, it's, it's just absolutely enthralling. Um, I must say what's kept us sane through this, we're still in a state of lockdown where we're only allowed out outdoors for one hour a day. But what's kept us sane is one, keeping a healthy diet, but two, a regular routine of Pilates. And that has been become a huge big part in our life. Um, and they become our friends and kind of part of our family because it's helped given us a bit of a structure uh, in our week by participating in these Pilates classes. So that's been huge. I must say, I'm looking at the computer screen. I look like an out of focus television. All this black and white that's going on with little bits of color that's popping in. But hopefully I'm going to inject a little bit of color into um, what we're going to be showing you today. We're going to be covering um, our latest collection of fabrics is just about hitting the shops. And for us, it is like, really? Hasn't that already been done with? Because we designed these fabrics a year ago. Plus, we literally shipped off in FedEx today our next range of fabric. No, not our next range of fabrics. A range of fabrics that will come out, that will hit the shops this time next year. It's like, oh, we're, just, we're so frustrated because we want to start playing with them now. Plus, we're working on two new books. Um, CAFE has a brand new book coming out in April, which is on our home and studio, and we'll talk about that in a moment. Um, and those who are lucky enough to live in California, um, there will be the opening of Keith and uh, his niece's exhibition, Color Duet, at the Monterey Art Museum. Um, and it was supposed to open this time, last, not this time last year, May time last year, but because of situation we're in, it's been postponed till this year. But because of that, it's kind of worked in our favor because we're planning a lot of virtual online events. And so people from all over the world will be able to enjoy the exhibition through cyberspace because they're going to be pumping, pumping, pumping visual stimulation through the internet. So clue into that. And some of you may or may not be familiar with Cave's niece, Erin uh, Lee Gaffill, and she gives extraordinary um, painting workshops and she's also a beautiful textile person. So um, clue into that if you may. And then later on the, in the year, <laughs> literally an hour ago, we got the proofs for the next P&Q book, which we've just approved on uh, the next book that we're going to be doing called um, English, no, Quilts in an English Village. I'll just show you the cover. So if don't don't show anybody else, I'm going to give you a sneak preview, okay? Just because I trust you guys. Oh, yeah, that's going to be the cover. Wow. You see it? That's going to be the back. And that's enough you get to see. You're going to have to wait till this time next year. Anyway, yeah. no, it'll be, out, it'll be out in August. But um, this, some of you might already have it on your bookshelves. This was the, the book that we came, brought up last year. And just to give you a little bit of a teaser, we're going to be um, showing you a few of the quilts that we finished off uh, for this book. And this is just a celebration, celebration of playing with um, a small diamond shape. And when I look at this, it's like looking at rippling water. I mean, if you had a waterbed, this would be fabulous to put on that quilt because you get, get your surfboard out. It's just <laughs> pretend you're in the Caribbean or somewhere. I don't know, I'm getting carried away. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, <you're> um, <laughs> we um, the way that we our fabric ranges are shown to the shops are um, free spirit put together the most amazing um, folders of fabrics and they put the fabrics into color families and I think it is so stimulating I'd find it so difficult to be a shop owner and have my budget to spend on these fabrics because I just want it all. I mean, how could you, how do you have to pick and choose between what's what, what's going to be what? But anyway, because the way is the, the way the world is, you can get the fabrics any way you want. I mean, hopefully your discerning shop will have the whole range, but that's a massive investment on their behalf. But for those who haven't, then you can cherry pick. Anyway, um, 
We're going to start off with the uh, kind of a cool black and white palace. And this was looking at, um, Cave was intrigued by huge banana leaves and loved the idea of um, playing with these big banana leaves with uh, this, rather than have a solid black background, broke it up with these polka dot of uh, shaded um, clouds. And then I brought in my shark's teeth, which cuts up beautifully for binding or backing um, and then the dapples, which I've done in new colorways, and some of you already have already played with those. And then Philip with his fabulous big blossoms, and then Keith injecting his genius um, colors of working with those hot magentas against that um, cold uh, brocade background. And then this Suzanne here was inspired by a row of um, flowers that were all stringed like, as if they were brought in from India, an Indian celebration. And it was just the, these lays of flowers. So he took the inspiration from those and painted out this design. And it's like a wonderful um, overlapping petal fabric. But when that's cut up, it's a beautiful stripe. Uh, we have a beautiful tradition here in the England where the pearly kings and queens back in the day, used to cover their outfits in buttons, in pearl, a mother of pearl buttons with a little red thread. And Keith took inspiration for that and then did this overall pattern. Love that, Brandon. Isn't that beautiful? I mean, that would make, make a beautiful shirt uh, oh, yeah. fabric. All of Wouldn't those, it? all the colorways are gorgeous. Yeah, and then this little lacy fern injecting those little tickles of color here and there where you got the little spots of color. And then moving through the range, we come to these. Um, over here, you had the black and white um, banana leaves. And here, you've got them in lime greens. Yes, they look great. On that, that turquoise blue background. Very nice. Brandon, all of those prints are beautiful. Well, I'm afraid I've got more to show you. <laughs> well, so, well, we're very happy to see them off. I hope I hope you put the chicken in the oven and you're sitting down just to look at this. Look at this that. is for the red hot mamas. Right. They're beautiful. Look at them. And then this cute. is a new colorway on the Philip Jacob feather fabric. Uh-huh. Um, I think that would be wonderful for a pair of pajamas if you wear pajamas. Just saying. Yeah. Yes, that would be. Can't, can't believe how well my hat goes with, with this collection. <laughs> it does. <clears throat> so, I mean, if you, want, if, you, if you want a whole color palette for a quilt, how do you choose? Yes, how do you choose? It's not easy. It's not easy. <laughs> They're beautiful. So this is getting into the blues. Look at those. Who doesn't love blue, right? Wow. They're all fantastic. Love that one in the far end there to your left, I guess. That's called. This one here. Yeah. yeah. That, that, was, that was basically looking at hydrangeas outside yeah. the house we have down in, on the uh, south coast of England. And we've got big hydrangea bushes. So, you know, um, if something grabs your attention that gets used. And then Coming into the orange, oops, upside down. I know, those cards are big. <laughs> and then you've got those wonderful rusty oranges against the red background with the banana leaves. Yes, the feathers are gorgeous. The row flowers there that you showed us, you know, it, it shows like a nice stripe. So that's just to give you a little bit of a teaser of what's going to be um, going into your leg. Oh, by the way, this shirt that I'm wearing is taking my um, Oxford fabrics. Oxford seem to be the trend at the moment. I painted this design about two years ago and suddenly it's the big trend. Um, if any of you like the idea of this kind of print, uh, it's available as one of the Zappy Dots t-shirts. So um, you can put that over your, your beautiful body frame and um, March the, the page pace. Um, okay, so I'm gonna show you a couple of, or Keith is gonna show you some of the fabrics where it's actually extended into a big drop. 
Do a lot of people say to us, hello, everybody. Hey, Kay. Welcome. <laughs> now, thank you very much. Now, we've all gotten excited about black and white suddenly. It's very funny. I've been excited about black and white for years because of my students all over the world doing wonderful black and white quilts in our workshops. So I've begun to get it into my actual uh, palette of, of, of quilts because I love what people do with black and white. So this is the banana leaf and you can see a, a big extension of it. How that fun that is. Nervous. I've done a, a, a columns quilt, but it's just great columns of these leaves going down that works extremely well. Another thing that I love is two color prints. So um, I hope the light's good enough it for is. you guys to see, but that's just a kind of very flat flower, but this cuts up beautifully, which I'm gonna show you um, in a little demo I'm gonna do in a minute. Great. But that's, that's fun. Beautiful print. Yeah, I love that print. You know, I mean, Brandon has always enjoyed uh, two color prints, you know, with his dapple, which has become one of our, our um, classics. And in these wonderful new colors, they're just, they have a beautiful edge to them. They're bright and cheerful. I mean, I've been having so much fun making new quilts for the book now, beyond the book. You know, I'm so far ahead of all of you guys. But anyway, so that, this is this is beautiful to, to look at, at his wonderful colors um, of, of things. Look at that one at the end, the purple, and then the yeah. orange and blue is just oh, so vibrant. So that's um, the jumble print and we have, so we already have all of those in our classics collection. So those are yeah. new ones. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what, one of the things that I wanted to just show you is that this is, this is the button fabric that we were talking about. And that is inspired really, I mean, it's by the Pearly Queens here, but also there's a wonderful artist called Nick Cave in, in San Francisco who, um, creates like this outfit is in completely covered in pearl buttons. Isn't that divine? That's I could see cool. Mary from our Pilates class wearing that outfit. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, anyway, so you can see how he had red thread through his, and so I used that as the center of my buttons too. That's gorgeous. It's, it's really interesting, Cave, to see where you get your inspiration from. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, now, we love all the colorways too that you offered in those buttons. Yeah, uh, well, I'll show I'll show more of those. In okay, a good. Well, this is um, cactus flower, which is one of Philip Jacobs' wonderful, bright, sassy, star-like flowers, and I just love the details he gets in his paintings, and uh, they're they're wonderful for me to color because the shapes and forms are so beautiful the sense of stripes and it, it absolutely blows me away that the how cave came up with the concept of mixing this uh cool turquoise blue in with this paprika um, yeah. and the dusty brown it is just is timeless it is wonderful um my favorite colorway at the moment uh of that is is this i, I don't know how i came up with this i call it technicolor um look look at how how lovely the dusty soft gray um makes those flowers just come to life but it's also the two-tone um background that yeah. has a, a slight brocade effect to it teal blue and gray i'd love to see a whole bunch of ladies walking down the road wearing moo-moos in this print <laughs> and then a big and then a big flower in their hair it would make a beautiful dress or a skirt. Do we do, it? Sure. do we do it? You go first. And then the hydrangea idea. Uh, I thought this would make a wonderful tablecloth. Can oh, yeah. you napkins and having wonderful plates with leaf prints on them so that everything is a soft dappled green quality. And so mm. that's, that's fun. And uh, I also... I know that people love making very dark quilts. I certainly do. And so I love to give people very dark 
exciting fabrics. And this, these also make wonderful shirts and um, dresses. Um, now, why do we, uh, can you talk with people about why we have the fabric printed on the weight of fabric that we do? Well, we love very, very fine, lightweight fabrics. I mean, one of the things that I found when I first came to this country was that Liberty was doing the most marvelous uh, fabrics printed on very fine lawn and cotton. And um, we don't go as fine as they do, but we're in that direction. One of the things is that when you make applique, it's very, very lovely uh, for, for turning over and sewing down. And the other thing is um, it, it, you can flip a fabric. I mean, this is not a terribly good example, but you, know, you, you could use, like if you wanted a very, very soft pastel version of this green, you could flip it over and use the backside. Um, and so very often we will do that in a quilt. We will have things on the right side and then a certain area where they're yeah. flipped over and you get that possibility. Yeah, that's a great idea, Kate. Yeah, I think it is. Um, yeah. And then, uh, you know, we talked about the buttons a minute ago and, I, and how much I love dark fabrics. That's one of the colorways of the buttons. Very, very dark Beautiful. and rich. Beautiful. Yeah. You can see the amazing punch of midnight blue and purple. And I want to kind of take my feet off it, uh, my socks off, and just <laughs> spread over that as if it's red grapes to make the wine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Can you show, okay, can you show the banana leaf with the uh, red leaves on the black? Yeah. Which is, it's really hot. Oh, yeah. I'm to make a really, really strong. Imagine the big borders of this or, or backing fabric. I love a good, uh, you know, Bobby Dazzler on the back of a quilt. And so, you know, that's a nice idea. Now, one of the things I want to point out to you, can you hold, just hold up for a moment? Some people have an issue about scale. And the beautiful thing about scale is you have to bypass that because when you take, a, a, say, a diamond shape like this and you're going to cut this up, and you break that up, see what happens when you isolate the fabric, how exciting that becomes. You'll see in a minute this, when I do my demonstration, this, I've, I've used this fabric in the demo. So you're not having to think too much about what and how, it, the fabric does the work for you. And it's incredibly exciting. So a lot of people wanna know about our secrets, about how we, you know, we play with our color and so forth. The fabric does the work for us, plus, also, when we're designing, the secret is having enough ingredients to play with. This is another one. A very small print, just a little, little kind of ferny leaves with little flowers tucked into the ferny, mossy bank. And I find this really charming to cut up and use with big florals. You know, there's a wonderful way that it's like putting florals onto a bank of moss. Mm -hmm. Quite a lovely idea. Really beautiful. So, um, can I, I just want to, yeah. I, I just want to show them something about, oh, is that range out yet? That range of fabrics out yet? No, no, that's the next one. No, they, they, I'm we're jumping not, ahead. We're not, we're not, we're not going to jump ahead. But <laughs> Murano, which we've talked about before, because I went to this wonderful village in the middle of Italy, mm. uh, you know, near Venice, and every house was a saturated color. You can see pink and blue and green and, you know, wonderful egg yolk yellow and sky blue. And so all these wonderful colors. So that our quilts just found their perfect um, place to, to, you know, to be shown against. Um, and, and so I'm, the quilts I'm gonna take down now are just from that book, which you will see. So this is one of the first shots we did for the book was this huge star. And I found this beautiful old peeling pale green wall to show the quilt against. And it was just fabulous. Yeah. Uh, you know, I've used a very, very strong background print. Usually on these star quilts, people use very, you know, solid fabrics or tiny little prints. But I, I love the idea of Brandon's big, Bali brocade, which is a really strong statement. 
And this, so I made the star really strong in black and white and bursts of yellow and so forth so that it stands out against this background. So I want to give a little bit of an IQ test to you guys. How many of you uh, observed what um, shape made up the last quilt that was on the wall? And what shape is making up the whole quilt behind me? Well, diamonds are a girl's, girl's best, best friend. friend. And I was looking for my halo. <laughs> I realized he's right behind me. So don't you reckon I'm sure? <laughs> you guys are funny. They are a girl's best friend. <laughs> yeah. Oh, by the way, the backing is um, our yes. lotus, as you can see. Oops. Yes, lotus leaf. It's beautiful. Look at and, that. Uh, yeah, so that the colors of that are just perfect. Right. Now, here's we've got some saturated red. And we found the most wonderful house that had old peeling red walls with pink doors. I mean, was it just perfect to right. show off the quilt? Mm -hmm. um, which, um, you know, it's just a very, very exciting set of these very blocky kind of stars that I think kind of explode nicely. I like the back, the uh, border is our Turkish carnation we revive from the past. Mm -hmm. It looks great on that quilt cave. So this it is does, this is the location yeah. that we actually found a photograph. Oh yeah. Very it cool. Like corned beef hash, doesn't it? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> or oh, it looks like my the he, my head after I've been in the sun for a couple of days. <laughs> yeah. And, <my> and <laughs> This is the backing for this quilt. It's a fabric I did called uh, Fruit Mandalas. I love when I'm traveling, I go to the fruit markets and I love it if they make a kind of decorative display of fruits, you know, and so I've just done kind of big circles of, of fruit prints. Now, one of the, uh, one of the things, uh, talk about what you're trying to achieve with the back when you flip over a quilt. Yeah, I like the party to continue. You know, you show the wonderful rich things and then if you turn it over and it's a beige, boring, you know, you know, flat surface of tiny little prints or solid, it's kind of a disappointment for me. I like to turn it over and, and when I'm showing my quilts in Houston, when I flip over, you know, I give a big talk about the front of the quilt and everybody goes, yes, wonderful. And then I turn over the quilt and they applaud because <laughs> they like the backs better than the front. But anyway, yeah, it is fun to just do something, a big scale print. Also with the binding, the binding is really important because here we've used my jumble, uh, my dot, um, but we try to add something that I equate as like being, putting on a bit of lipstick. I don't wear lipstick, but uh, <laughs> you know, it's just something that's going to kind of lift the, yeah. the palette um, and just give it a little bit of tickle. And so I think here you can see it doesn't, it isn't more important than the rest of the color balance that it's going on, but it just is a little bit of a sing song. But, and it's very important to consider. Yes, I totally agree. Now, now this one that's on the wall is um, a sneak preview of what's gonna come in the next book, which is Quilts in an English Village. Um, and we found the most beautiful soft pink wall. We went to a town called Lavenham, which is one of the most colorful towns in England. It's very small, it's off the beaten track, and a lot of people don't even know about it, but it's all half timber buildings in the most wonderful colors. Somehow, the people in that town got turned on to color. I think they must have had a lot of Italians come and live with them or something. There's suddenly gold buildings and pink buildings and blue buildings, and they're all half timbered with these wonderful structures, and they're old and cranky and fabulous. And so we've done one of our own most exciting books, which will be coming out next autumn. If this, this autumn. If any of you are Harry Potter films, 
you will recognize, yes. oh, actually, we're getting the most incredible sunset outside. Sorry, are. I got distracted. Yeah, um, I it's the color of this quilt. It's the color, it is the color <laughs> of this quilt. Bundle, yeah. while you're looking out the window. Um, <laughs> it, uh, anyway, it is the birthplace of Harry Potter. Is oh. where it is. Yeah, so, yeah. You yeah, recognize. They use that as, 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 because it's such a wonderful historic town. But anyway, I thought you'd like to see how how this big um, flower print that I was showing you earlier, the uh, cactus. Yeah, um, the cactus flower. Cactus flower, uh, how that looks so wonderful as a border. I okay. love it here where it's kind of, you get a whole um, striation of them. Um, what, we, what we're trying to achieve with our border is that it allows the design to keep on flowing out. It doesn't frame, it doesn't close in or steal more attention. It just, yeah, just has a yeah. wonderful kind of keep flow, uh, excitement going. <clears throat> What's the backing on that one? The backing on that one is Brandon's onion rings. Yeah, <clears throat> it's great. Very nice. I agree with you, Cave. I think the backing is see. It's like big cabbages cut open. Right. It kind of looks like raindrops on a on a on a puddle. Exactly. Ripples. Now, on this wall <clears throat> is a picture from uh, a sneak preview of our book that's going to come out about this house. One of the things is when Branton and I travel, several people in the audience say, "Where do you live? Can I come and see you?" And I say, stay home. We don't have time to give you tea and entertain you. But um, it is wonderful that we were able to do a whole book on the house. And this is um, one of our great big patchworks of knitting that's taking place on the work wall. And this is Kay Facet in the studio. So it's behind the scenes. It's the way that I design things and some of my secrets it's very hard to tell people how you design this right like like asking a centipede you know which which leg do you move first um you know it's and I, I don't know a lot of stuff goes into creating and um thank goodness we're able to do it but okay. anyway the, the okay, project, is that book gonna be like a, a peek behind the curtain right that's right exactly that'll be that's, awesome but you can stay home and still come to my house <clears throat> and enjoy Great. it. As a little bit of a sneak preview, I'll give you, I'll turn the camera around at the end of the day and you can have a little bit of a sneak preview of our working studio. So this is um, a knitted throw. I love to knit. Um, I can think out my ideas about color more easily through knitting than anything else. And so I have a whole big baskets and tubs full of colors and I just sit down and I knit like crazy. The colors from this were taken from um, a Chinese ancestral portrait that I have downstairs. And you will see that in the book. You'll see how I was matching the colors and playing with that. But, um, and I've taken a black for every side of this tumbling box. So that's consistent throughout and then just changing the medium colored tops and the bright light color on the side of the box that gives it that dimension. But I, this is one of my favorite prints. And the reason that I'm showing it to you as, as a structure is that um, I'm going to show you how I play with that and how it's just similar <coughs> to um, things that you've got. Now, the first thing I've got here is my my sort of mossy bank in dark reds, kind of Christmas greens and reds, and then that purple um, grape-like thing, and then the, the very, very dark hydrangea. And so I'm putting those up. So as you notice, uh, this gray wall that Cave is working against is not an ordinary wall. It's one, actually one of our best-selling fabrics. It's uh, gray flannel, and it's marked off with this grid, grid, which is actually perfect for actually lining up when you're setting up your fabrics. You don't need to pin. Because it's flannel, the, the cotton fabrics will just stick, and you can rearrange your, arrange your structure, and then stand back and 
change without, you don't have to glue or sew. Um, it just sticks without having to use any pins, okay? Yes, I think that every sewer's room should have that. So this is a close up of the orange colorway of the buttons, so which is kind of a wonderful russet with a little blue um, coloring in the center as if it were a stitch. Really beautiful. Isn't it, isn't it? It is. So this, this will act very nicely as if it's a solid or a textured background. Um, again, I think it make beautiful um, shirts or as you can see on my shirt here, I put on the insides a um, couple of um, the K facet ribbons. And also I forgot to mention on the buttons, I've put uh, our buttons, which is a range of buttons we're designing for a company called Dill Buttons. So again, any of this information you can get on our website and somebody was asking, <laughs> Where do I get it? It's in my local corner shop. I don't know where you live, honey, but go to kfacet.com and you can get information on where you can get it. And if you can't get it there, then you can get it on online, I'm sure, like Amazon. Yes. The, um, Brandon, the buttons are dill, right? D-I-L-L? D-I-L-L. -L. -L. Right. And this, this is just one of the many, um, many in the range. Yeah, we, those are really we, nice. We like to change the buttons on the shirts we have made just to um, zap it up. So this is a close up of the blue color in the, um, I forget the name of it. Anyway, I'm sure you're taking notes and you'll know what I'm talking about. It's a damask flower. There you go, 20 brownie points. <laughs> Good. You, I was testing you, you thought I was, there you go. Well, it is a test, I will say. Okay, but so what Kate's, what Kate's doing here is just putting up the fabrics in any old random way and then standing back and he'll have a little bit of a chat with you about, or you can see for yourself what you don't, what you like and what you don't. So you had a question, Sharon. I just wanted you to show us a little more closely those Renaissance ribbons on your uh, cuff. Oh. Yeah, well, you can also see um, on the button band. Oh, yeah. Where the neckline opens up, I've put it on the inside too. Very so nice. it just gives a little bit. And then when you fall back your cuff, so I can have my cuff look like that. But if you want it to look like you spent a bit more money, you can take a cheap shirt and make it look expensive by just blinging up the inside of the collar. Very and nice. you know, if, if you don't sew or you're a little bit of nervous about doing it, then get somebody else to do it for you and then bake them a cake. Exactly. So, you know, Brandon, you're, Belinda's on. She answered some questions. Just wanted Who? you to know. Belinda, Belinda. Mabley. Yes. <laughs> Hello, Belinda. And, uh, someone has asked, what is the pattern that you use for your men's shirts? Do you have a particular pattern or just a... No, we have a shirt that we like. We have a basic shirt we like. We have like a shirt where there's enough room underneath the arm so it's not too tight. Mm -hmm. um, I personally before, prefer a grandfather collar. So I've got a collar on here just because I've got a thick neck. Um, get a, a very simple shape. I don't want a shape that's going to have bust darts and cut into the pattern. I want the shirt, the shirt is going to, the fabric is going to do the work for me. So I want it quite simple. I have an inverted pocket that sits on the inside so I can keep my contraband in here. <laughs> uh, chocolate. Um, well, that's what I call it. Or I can be playing with whatever's down there. Um, so, yeah something that's simple and comfortable. I don't think it needs to be a fancy, fancy shape. I really don't. I think it should be two rectangles and sleeves. The one thing I will say is if you um, have a shirt that you're bored of or you want to you give it a little bit more of a, a new style, another way to play with the ribbons is to put the ribbon down the outside, down the seam line of yeah. your shirt. I haven't done it on here, but I often do. So when you're waving for the taxi, right? you lift your arm, you'll have a nice little bit of a, you know, zip line well, going on down there. 
Right. And another reason you could do it that way is during these COVID times, for those of us that have gained a little weight, me, um, we could make our shirts bigger, right? Open up the seams and put down a bit of ribbon, then you've gained a couple of inches and you look even more fabulous. Exactly. Plus, you haven't spent, you haven't gone out and bought a new piece for your wardrobe. You just made that look better. Right. You just put a piece of ribbon in the shirt, and made it a little bit bigger. So, whilst we've been chatting, you can see how quickly this piece has gone up on the wall. Keith is working hard. Um, with the diamonds, what we do is we cut a six inch strip, just a strip, a long strip. And then we have a template, we cut a 60 degree angle and that gives us our diamond on the side like this. So. So no fussy cutting, just a no, six inch no strip. No fussy, no fussy. So because when you cut into the pattern in an abstract way, it gives a little bit more intrigue. It does. And as, as you can see, when you here, this is the um, design that I showed you at the very beginning that looked like a um, flower lays. When it's cut up, it looks like stripes, garlands. garlands. And also, we like the stripes to go in different directions rather than all pointing in, in the same way. It's nice when they have a little bit of a, a play where they're shooting off at, like different fireworks. Right. Gives a little more interest. Yeah. Yeah. See over here, we've got them going off in this direction and that direction, and it just has a wonderful kind of movement. So you can see, uh, one of the things that I, I love is the way that you can see how that, um, as Brandon was talking about at the beginning, how that, banana that tree. big banana leaf cuts up. I mean, it just gives you wonderful little abstract sense of, of color. It kind of looks very much like a, a piece of Dali artwork, as if you cut up your Dali painting, as if <laughs> <Right>. you would. <laughs> In the old Burton storm. Okay, so um, that's just one way of playing with it. And then you could decide, okay, what I would like to do is to make this more uh, really hot colors. So I take some of the cool, colors away and um, start bringing in more of the warmth. So, uh, yeah, fine. Now, uh, one, one of the things I'll point out, some of you might not be familiar with the tumbling block structure, and this is um, a, a very, common geometric structure, which has a dark, a medium and a light. And it's often repeated. This actually is very uh, fashionable at the moment, this actual structure on uh, geometric packaging and interior unit, especially if you've got a minimal space. And what Cave's doing is taking this structure, but then incorporating color and pattern. So you can see you've got the dark, You've got the medium, you've got the light. Dark, medium, and light will go there. And then that's just repeated. Okay, so now we see what it would be like if, if you were just using kind of warm colors with a few darker ones. Um, then I, I love blue. I mean, I think that the whole world is falling in love with blue these days. So we start to, and sometimes what I do is I just go over what I've already done there. So not even take it down, but just start um, doing a few, um, really bring in some incredible, exciting blues. <clears throat> Kafe, it's amazing that just a few color switch outs change the look so much. Yeah, absolutely. Now, um, often we get asked a question about color theory or a reason why we put a certain color next to another color. Well, it's kind of um, obvious, but every color is affected by what, it's, what it goes next to. And so what we do is we get enough up on the board and then we stand back and see what doesn't work and eliminate. Or it might tell us that we need to go in more with this direction rather than pre-plan a recipe or a color palette. We we'll just get it up there on the design wall, then stand back. And hey, you might arrange something and you think, 
well, hell, I'll just go home and repaint the bedroom. Right. You know, like, why not? Exactly. Why not? Change the color for the new quilt that you're making. I know. And then see if your husband noticed or not. <laughs> yep. Probably won't till a year later. And says, is that new? <laughs> I often will wear something new into the kitchen. I'll wait for Kate to see, is that new or not? <laughs> it's really beautiful. And that uh, flannel wall is really holding those fabrics fabrics perfectly. Look at that. that that's one of our, our um, classic um, design that we, we sell and it sells better than any of our other things. It's just this flannel wall. It's flannel and so the fabrics stick to it uh, if they're ironed properly. Now one of you, uh, some people might wonder why it's a gray. If it were white, look at how much harder those colors would look. Mm -hmm. um, you know, they look so much more aggressive, but with it being next to this elephant gray, the colors sing in their own harmony. They don't, they're not fighting. Tense it was. Oops. So this is uh, the blue colorway that Kate's talking about, with that wonderful, in, wonder, wonderful injection of emerald green and the little red stitching. <clears throat> Beautiful. Isn't that beautiful? It'd be very nice with a pair of denim jeans. Yes, I love that. Mm. I love all those button colorways. You guys makes are inspiring me go, us. It makes me want to go away and dye my hair to go with it. <laughs> anyway, you can see now how we've gone into moon indigo. Uh, yeah. And that, that's, that's just a wonderful way of, of playing with the palettes that we work out. When I'm sitting there painting my fabrics to give to the world, I'm creating a paint box and I want everybody to have their pastel version, their gray version, their blue version, their saturated reds and pinks and all of that. And so that you can play these games and you can, you can make things come and go. And, you know, sometimes, you might do a whole blue quilt that has injections of, you know, orange and red, uh, you know, so that it, it gives it a little bit of a, a kick color. Mm -hmm. You know, but, you know what I'm getting off on? Look at how this flower, yeah, is it's this fabric cut up, and look at how intriguing it looks when it's just set, set off against this large scale print against these much smaller scale prints. And they, you know, some people might be judging and say, why, why should it be all the same scale? Absolutely not. There's no real rhyme or reason why they work or don't. They just do. Yeah, they look fantastic. And they, so uh, it would be lovely if you were a whole live audience out there and we could talk to you and you could ask questions now. That's my favorite part of any talk that I give in the world. I, I just want to uh, point out something. Uh, step aside from OK. <laughs> it's, um, what's really important to me about this color palette is if I were to eliminate these three, look at how much colder mm -hmm. that, that gets uh, when you put in the little bit of hot reds. And the magenta. And the med I, yeah. Magenta and purple in this fabric kind of make a, a a stepping stone into that world of blue. And mm -hmm. some people might think, oh, I wouldn't touch that colorway with a barge pole. You know, if, you know, my friend down the road might not like it. Well, bugger her. Um, you know, it's, you need to have that little bit of pop, not too much where it's going to overtake, but it just that little bit of chili sauce. So ooh, ooh, I'll have another mouthful. You know, it's just absolutely so important. Yeah, so, I think. Brandon, I agree with you. I think that those colors really make a quilt sparkle, you know? Yeah. yeah. No, it's yeah. very true. Right. You kind of warm your hands by it from being like in, in, in nice the, books. In the kind of 1950s, if anybody can remember that back, I mean, most of you weren't born then, uh, the decorators and so forth that I knew uh, would talk about a kick color. You have a group of colors and then you have a kick color you know, mm -hmm. that brings it to life and right. kind of, you know, it's like a, 
a really big squeeze of lime into your drink or your, or your, uh, or your stew. Right, you know, exactly. You need that spice, little bit of spice, that little bit of punch, right? Yeah, exactly. Yes. So, well, thank you, Kay, for um, working on this for us. It's been fantastic. Mm -hmm. um, could you guys tell us the name of those, the, the books, that your two new books that are coming? A few people have asked. What are the yeah. names? Um, the, the one that's going to come out eventually is, is called uh, well, Built in an uh, English Village. But don't, don't worry about that yet. If you want right. to think of is Kate Fassett in the studio, if you want a behind the scenes front row seat. I do. Lazy circus that is our house. And uh, it's, uh, dare I say, it is up on Amazon, taking pre orders at the moment. Yeah. But it will be in your discerning stores from um, the first week of April. I'll tell you something about this book. When we did it, we thought, okay, it's, it's going to be kind of interesting and we're going to have these projects and so forth. When the actual uh, roughs came in of the book. We were astounded at how good this chaotic mess of a house looks in photographs. And I didn't clean up at all. You know, you're going to see stuff piled up in the library and in our storeroom upstairs. It's like a, a tsunami of fabrics. Wow. Um, but, uh, it's a little tidier now. The bundle is on deck. But I'm telling you, it was... Uh, it was very, very chaotic and crazy. Oh, what was the uh, uh, Quilson Barano. Oh, oh, Quilson Barano. Quil well, Quilson Barano is, is, out, is out now. Is out now. And oh, yes. That, that's our, our, our book on this wonderful village near Venice. And that's, um, that's using our latest arrangement, uh, our latest collection of fabrics. Yeah. Um, but as I say, if you have any difficulty, if you want to know about more information about where and what we've got out there, um, you know, go to kfaster.com or brandonmabry.com and it'll give you a whole list of where the different products are. There's, um, we've got our fingers in so many different pies and if we kind of catch our breath to keep up with it all. Um, the one thing we're really missing is our travels. Oh, yeah. I miss our travels so much. Because usually we're on the road about five months of the year giving workshops all around the world and there's nothing more rewarding than to take a whole group of you people and, and we're not teachers, we're encouragers and seeing how you guys will take something like this structure but do your own colorway in your own choice now, of fabric. In the last second, do you want to just show them the shelves? Yeah, the I'm going to give you a little bit of a sneak preview and my, I, we, I know we got some of our Pilates, some of Keith's Pilates class in the in and this talk the listening, audience. and they usually see a little section of where Keith lies on the floor doing his Pilates each Thursday. <laughs> now they're going to actually get to see what the rest of the room looks like. So it'll <laughs> seem like they're having a little bit of an earthquake, but anyway, here we go. So this is just showing you the latest. Can you see the screen if the camera's in the right way? There you are. So. Um, this here is showing our latest collection of fabrics. And at the top are some of the top of, of the of shelves. China that I collect. And then moving over are our, our kind of classics and uh, fabrics that are kind of between collections. And then this is what's called the Cave Collective. And those are fabrics that will uh, be, that we can use going forward. And then over wow. here is all the books that inspire everything. Wow. Look at that. So okay. that just gives you a little bit of a teaser of um, what's going to be in this book. Uh, and the next time that you guys will see us on the webinar, uh, we'll be doing a new, whoops, sorry. We'll be doing a new talk in um, um, April, March, April with uh, Sharon, if you invite us back. Um, well, of course, we'd love to have you back. We love having you. Yeah, um, we'll do more of a talk about the book and there will be new things to talk to you about. Um, Zappy Dots, who do our t-shirts, they've come out with leg arranger leggings. 
So if you'd like to see uh, your husband in a pair of our leggings, then <laughs> now she knows. Got us, I've got, well, you can only but try. Um, and yeah, uh, do we have any questions before we close down? Well, I was just looking through a lot of compliments. Um, everyone, we miss seeing both of you on the road. Well, we all do. And so do our, our guests today. They've, they've all said that they miss seeing you too. So we're all missing one another. I think we're all looking to get our uh, COVID shots so that we can all get back out there in the world and start living again. Um, they asked if uh, there's a question in here, would you guys ever travel to the, uh, the UK? Wait, you are in the UK, down, uh, down under. Would you ever go to Australia? We, we actually were supposed to be doing a tour of Australia and New Zealand last February, uh, we were going to do um, uh, China, New Zealand and Australia, but unfortunately what happened um, and, you know, we're kind of, you know, we're so grateful to be home. We've, um, Keith and I have actually really enjoyed this COVID time in the sense of it's allowed us to focus on who we are, what we enjoy, and we enjoy one another. We enjoy collaboration on our work and producing the books that we have that we can throw up to you guys. But boy, we're waiting for those doors to open up only us. We can get running out there. I just need to put, make sure I pull on some clothes on those lockdown does open so I because I'm so ready to get out there and um, do it. But anyway, we hopefully will be um, back in the US first um, middle part of this year, if not the end of the year. Um, um, unfortunately, um, I do have some bad news. Uh, our usual workshop tour that we usually do, um, we usually do a workshop tour of the States um, and we try to capture about 12 cities in about seven weeks. Um, unfortunately, we're not going to be doing that. We're going to be doing more of a cramped version. So watch this space. Something will happen, but it won't be the whole big tour that we usually do. Um, because it, we just have to be sensible. Um, but we are coming back. We do want to come back. We're ready to get back up and start running at you guys. So be ready for us. We'll be coming. Well, we're um, ready, Brandon. Yeah, and um, there was one other thing, I, and it's gone from the top of my mind. Anyway, so much to say, so much to share, but until next time. Oh, I have to say a huge big thank you to uh, two people that are very important on our world and um, make K for My World happen. And that is one to bundle our assistant, and she's uh, uh, rooted from Australia to here. She's getting us in order and um, we're very grateful to, um, uh, yes, she's like a bundle of joy. That's our bundle, she's our studio assistant. And um, the person who does our social media, and that is my twin sister. <clears throat> yes, yes, they, they all, uh, you know, everybody's important in the whole, you yeah. know. We're, we're, we're a team. Exactly. Yeah. So I know you need everybody help makes everything come together. So I, your Absolutely. sister and Bundle and you and Kaif and everybody. Yeah. So, well, thank you, Kaif. Thank you, Brandon. We're so happy to have had you today. I'm going to switch this. Let me see if I can switch it back over. Let me see. Hold on. I'm, I'm, I'm trying here, Brandon. <laughs> Let me see. Okay, I think I'm on and you guys are off, but thank you to Kate and Brandon for joining us. We are so grateful that you've come to spend some time with us again. As always, you inspire us. I would just like to remind everybody, Kate and Brandon talked very quickly about their backings, but they have an awful lot of the 108 inch backings, which are also coming out with this collection. You saw them on the back of many of the quilts that Kate and Brandon showed us. And they're 108 inch and they're in 100% cotton sateen. So please look for those, they're beautiful. And as Kay from Brandon said, let the party continue to the back of the quilt. Um, for a giveaway this week, we wanna know which one of the fabrics that Kay from Brandon shared with us this week was your favorite. The brand oh. new ones that are being shipped to quilt shops now, which one is your favorite? And we are going to ship out an assortment of half yard cuts to six winners. So just let us know. 
and we would just like to uh, we'd like some feedback on which were your favorites and we look forward to getting that information send us hearts thumbs up and remember tell us where you're from we definitely want to know so thank you and we will see you all in a couple of weeks and keep sewing just keep on sewing thank you